Let's start. Thank you. It's a big honor for me to be here with you. Uh, NIST directive is uh, considered uh, together with uh, GDPR as some kind of uh, revolution uh, in, in uh, the cybersecurity law because uh, it enforces the law requirements to take care about uh, critical systems. From the data protection, GDPR uh, enforces uh, the very restrictive uh, security requirements on personal data, as we know, and NIS directive, and uh, precisely speaking, the law that would uh, adopt the NIS directive would enforce very restrictive security requirements on uh, the sectors like banking, transport, healthcare, and uh, the other parts of uh, so-called critical infrastructure like energy, uh, power supply, and so on. The, ma the main difficulty uh, is uh, the target of uh, the security protection, security management. The target are critical systems. The systems uh, that uh, main uh, security priority uh, is availability. So uh, also the, the security strategy, the designs, the safeguards, the security management should have in mind uh, that uh, the main priority of uh, most of these systems, I mean critical systems, is not uh, confidentiality, is not access control, but uh, it's uh, the uh, uninterrupted operations of these systems. And these uninterrupted operations of these systems should be connected with the other security uh, requirements that uh, are enforced by NIS directive. And I will talk about this in the scope of uh, security incident detection and incident management. What you see on this slide, it is the summary of main uh, security requirements enforced on the operators of essential services. Uh, who is operator of essential services? Now, for example, the power distribution company, power station, water supply company, uh, any, any, any company that uh, uh, plays uh, important role in our country. Uh, it could be the bank uh, that uh, services is required for the proper operation of uh, uh, entire country. It, it would be the transportation system. It would be the hospital providing healthcare. So there are a lot of uh, uh, companies that are covered by this uh, cybersecurity law. And on this slide, you will see the summary. In this summary, there are some uh, very obvious requirements like risk management, like asset protection, like incident management, reporting of uh, incidents. Uh, in Poland, in, in adopted law, we have 24 hours after a uh, security breach occurs. In 24 hours, the company is obliged to inform uh, appropriate national security authority about the incident with all the information related uh, what happened what uh, consequ what, what would be the consequences of the uh, breach and what countermeasures uh, when taken uh, by the company uh, to uh, in proper way respond to the incident also the documentation of assets and cybersecurity it is the new law requirement uh, we have, generally speaking, three kinds of uh, critical systems. Uh, these systems are covered by new cybersecurity law. Uh, business critical systems, for example, the banking system, that uh, incident uh, consequences uh, are related to very high economical costs. Uh, we have mission critical systems, for example, SCADA and other industrial control systems. The incident in this kind of uh, environment could result in the severe consequences for the economy. It could be the uh, problems with the uh, energy supply. Uh, it could be the, the, the problems uh, related, uh, for example, to operation of a factory. Uh, it could be the problem uh, that, r that results in some kind of um, uh, disaster in, in ecology, ecological disaster, and many other consequences. 
uh, completely different than the consequences that uh, we have in normal IT systems. Because in IT system, the typical consequence is disruption of business process or leakage of confidential data, sensitive data. In uh, the industry like uh, electricity, energy supply, power supply, uh, water, water supply, uh, factories, chemistry factory, for example, the consequences of security breach could be much more severe. We have also the life or safety critical systems, for example, in the hospital, IT systems uh, supporting healthcare. In case of incident, we could uh, have uh, severe consequences for our lives, for uh, patients, for children that, that are in the, in the hospital. Uh, and the critical infrastructure, so the, uh, sub the, the, the um, elements of our society, the elements of our economy that are crucial for, uh, for, 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 for the country, uh, like the transportation system, like the energy system, and so on. So let's go into the details. How we can manage the incidents uh, in uh, the infrastructure covered by NIS directive? How we can detect incidents uh, in uh, critical systems? So first we should uh, have the general look at entire infrastructure because only monitoring critical systems is not enough. Critical systems are connected to other systems. For example, SCADA systems uh, very often are accessed from internet because of maintenance reasons. So there is the VPN connection and someone from external area connects to a critical system and we never know what would happen in external system. So uh, when you look at this slide, you will see the connected worlds of uh, operational technology and IT technology. And in this system, we can see the business critical systems like uh, bank or, or some uh, e-commerce system that uh, uh, incident could result in severe uh, money con consequences, uh, economic losses. We have uh, critical systems, mission critical systems, uh, for example, in the factory or in the power supply, and they are connected with other elements of IT infrastructure. Uh, what is important to mention that uh, all uh, known incidents in uh, industrial systems were conducted through the enterprise networks. Uh, so to effectively manage the incidents uh, in time, uh, discover that something is wrong, we should monitor the full path from internet through enterprise network, uh, through the wide area network, to the industrial network. Monitoring only industrial network, monitoring only critical systems, it's not enough. We should be uh, quick enough to find that somebody is preparing to uh, influence uh, our critical systems. And for this purpose, we should, uh, we should monitor entire infrastructure. And also we have uh, live critical systems that uh, uh, disruption could uh, result in the loss of our lives or loss uh, or problems with, with our uh, health. Uh, for the appropriate uh, management of security and particularly uh, the appropriate management uh, of uh, incidents, uh, we should have in mind that three elements are required. We need people who should take care about this. We need tools, and I will talk about the tools later. And also we need appropriate organization. The organization of security management, uh, the good practice is to use uh, some uh, recognized standards, some recognized security frameworks. For critical systems, one of the most recognized uh, frameworks is the American NIST recommendations. Uh, it's called uh, Framework for Improving Critical Infrastructure Cybersecurity. The last version was issued uh, this year. And uh, in this recommendation, you see five steps that are recommended for the management of critical systems. First step is understanding the business context, is conducting risk management. First of all, we should uh, do the inventory. We should know what we should protect. We should uh, have inventory of critical systems. We should know 
how they are connected, way, where they are located, what is the platform they are working, and what are the risks for them. What would be the consequences for the organization, consequences sometimes for the, for the country, of a security breach in this kind of critical systems. Then, based on the risk assessment, risk analysis, we should design appropriate safeguards, deploy these safeguards, protect it in appropriate way. Then, third phase is detection of incidents. What means detection of incidents? Uh, it is not implementing simply intrusion prevention system or sandbox, because uh, firewalls, anti-malware sandboxes are safeguards. So if safeguard is able to protect, there is no incident. If attack is blocked by intrusion prevention system or malware is detected and blocked by anti-malware system, there is no incident. Stage three in this methodology is incident detection. So it is the detection of the situation where the uh, safeguards were bypassed, where our security system was broken. So we should have the tools that are able to look at our system behavior, for example, to detect the anomalies, something that indicates that the intruder is inside. So it is phase uh, uh, number, uh, number uh, three, detection. Uh, respond if the incident occurred, if we recognize that something is wrong with our critical systems or the surrounding infrastructure, we should respond on time and uh, first uh, uh, conduct the contamination, the block the spread of the incident to other systems, eradication, forensic, do appropriate actions uh, to stop uh, cyber, cyber, cyber criminals and also uh, to have uh, so-called lessons learned to understand uh, why our safeguards uh, were broken, uh, what is the weakest link in, in, in our system. And we also should think about enrichment of safeguards. And recovery, if something was uh, destroyed, we should uh, recover the systems to the normal operations. Okay, so uh, there is also another standard issued by International Society of Automation and in this standard, we have recommendations uh, for the protection of critical systems, especially or particularly the systems in, uh, as in, in uh, the area of uh, industrial networks, I mean industrial control systems like SCADA. Uh, the recommendation is to uh, implement appropriate protections. And the fundamental, the, the most fundamental element of security is uh, appropriate segmentation of the network. So we should implement safeguards like firewalls, we should create uh, proper security zones, and uh, we should monitor the security zones, because uh, we always sh should have in mind that any safeguards could be bypassed. So uh, the access to crit critical systems should be isolated with appropriate safeguards like firewalls, like privileged access security, uh, like intrusion prevention system, anti-malware, and all the threats that are uh, relevant for uh, critical systems. The second uh, part of uh, the uh, security system, the first part uh, presented here was uh, safeguards. The second part is incident detection. Incident detection means the uh, tools that monitor the behavior of all the elements, uh, that monitor the network traffic, they monitor the activities conducted uh, in the IT systems to find anomalies, to find behaviors that indicate uh, that the safeguards were broken, that somebody, the cyber criminals, are inside our systems. And for this purpose, first of all, we should monitor the entire infrastructure. Monitoring only part of this is absolutely not enough. I will show you as an example Flowmon solution uh, that is dedicated for incident detection. It is IDS system, anomaly detection system. It is based on the flows and the network uh, traffic analysis. And uh, using this system, you can very easily monitor and detect, in detect incidents uh, related to any critical system. The business critical systems, for example, in the bank, in insurance company, 
the uh, critical systems in the chemical factory, in uh, power station, in energy supply company, uh, and also uh, the life critical systems in the hospital. So th this system is very, very universal. How it works? It monitors the network infrastructure and discovers the situations that indicate the internal threat, that indicate that cyber criminal, for example, using malware or generally speaking using botnet, is controlling our systems. So uh, Flowmon is uh, very understandable for the operator because it provides clear evidence that something bad happened. For example, if we see that in the internal network where critical systems are located, there is new IP address, uh, it is the information very valuable for us because we see that probably somebody connected uh, in an authorized way the computer or a modem with the remote access. If we see that there is new protocol in the network, probably there is the malware or uh, some uh, software that was illegally installed. Uh, if we see anomaly in, in network behavior, in the systems like uh, industrial control systems or internal networks where the databases are located, new protocols uh, and uh, something new in the behavior, it is the result of the control, controlled change. We know in most cases about installation of new software or it is the activity of cyber criminals. Uh, port scanning, network scanning, Absolutely, it indicates that we have the cyber criminal inside our network. DNS tunneling, unknown DNS requests, the same. It indicates that we have the ins uh, internal threat and uh, some access to, for example, command and control from threat intelligence uh, information. Uh, this kind of uh, information presented in understandable way uh, first uh, makes the incident detection quicker because uh, people responsible for uh, incident detection immediately know that something is wrong and also we have the evidence what in reality happened. Uh, I will provide you five uh, key elements or five features of uh, Flowmon uh, that uh, helps the company to uh, implement incident detection in appropriate way. First, uh, for efficient incident detection, the tool responsible for this uh, task should use many analytical methods, should use many uh, detection methods, because uh, when we look at current malware, uh, the cyber criminals use many methods. There are many attack vectors, there are uh, many evasion techniques. They, they try to hide the cyber, criminal, cyber criminals' activities. So also the tools should uh, utilize uh, many uh, methods. Uh, in Flowmon we have uh, machine learning, we have adaptive baselining, we have heuristics, we have uh, behavior, behavior patterns, signatures, for example, attack signatures, and also we have threat intelligence that is used for incident detection. So there are many methods. Uh, for efficient uh, detection of uh, critical systems, uh, problems like uh, incidents, uh, like uh, potential breaches, uh, we should monitor entire path. Uh, because uh, all known uh, incidents in industrial networks were conducted from external systems, uh, from uh, enterprise business networks, from internet, like the last incident uh, in Ukraine. Uh, to be effective in this detection and uh, Detection is one thing. If we detect an incident at the early stage, we are able to respond on time and avoid serious breaches. If we are able to find the incident quickly and respond in an appropriate way, we can avoid se severe consequences. And for the uh, security monitoring, it's uh, really crucial to look at entire path of the attack, from uh, internet, through enterprise network, wide area network, to 
industrial. And Flowmon is able to monitor all the networking infrastructure from internet through enterprise, wider area network to the industrial networks. It is really cr crucial for the effective uh, detection. Uh, third uh, key feature that is also very important is understanding how malware works, how current malware work. The cyber criminals create malware in the way that it should be hidden from safeguards. So current malware is not doing a, doing a lot of noise. Uh, there are algorithms uh, utilized by malware to hide in internal networks. And when we look at uh, what malware is doing, the activities in most cases are visible only in the surrounding network. Malware is scanning the proximity elements and uh, you see the activities of malware only on the, on the, access, uh, the, the, the access switch. Uh, the uh, intrusion prevention systems located uh, at the edge of the networks, the firewalls uh, that protect the edge of the networks, they do not see what's going on in internal network. We need to connect to the access switch to see that something is wrong with the uh, particular computer or particular system. Uh, Flowmon is able to monitor all the elements of the network, the core elements, the core switches, and also the access switches. And based on the flow analysis or a real traffic analysis is able to find the behaviors, the anomalies that uh, indicate the existence of cyber criminals. It is really crucial for uh, effective uh, incident detection. When we talk about uh, breaches, avoiding the breaches, uh, we should have in mind that uh, one of the main requirements of uh, current, uh, uh, let's say, organization safety is the services availability. And the network problems could cause the same result as malware. If we have uh, some problems with the network connectivity, some uh, devices are not working properly, uh, some VLANs are not properly uh, configured, or the application generates a lot of traffic and uh, we see that some uh, links are overloaded with traffic. Uh, this kind of uh, network problems could have the same result as malware and cyber criminals. Uh, the tools like Flowmon uh, provide you the visibility and troubleshooting tools for the network. You can see what's going on in any VLAN, any link, any network segment and quickly discover the network problems and uh, in proper way troubleshoot and resolve these kind of problems. So these tools are embedded into the uh, the same tools as provide incident detection. Cost effectiveness. Uh, what means cost effectiveness? We can have on the market a lot of uh, possible solutions and we see at the cost of the solution, not only the licensing cost but also cost of the deployment and we can qu quickly realize that the cost is absolutely not acceptable for our company. There are many solutions, for example, for industrial control systems that require copying all the traffic from entire industrial uh, network and sending this traffic outside to the external central system for the analysis. It is huge cost. It is extremely huge cost for the distributed in the country industrial systems to cover all the traffic and send it somewhere for the external analysis. In Flowmon, only the flows management is required. Uh, there is no need to, to, to copy all the traffic and send it to some uh, central location for analysis. So from the simplicity and from the cost point of view, I think it's uh, one of the, of the uh, let's say, the most cost-effective solutions available. Uh, you have the summary of uh, the five uh, crucial elements of effective uh, uh, incident detection in critical systems generally, in industrial, particularly in industrial control systems. So variety of analytical methods, uh, monitoring of entire uh, attack path, uh, detection of internal threats hidden from safeguards, uh, network visibility and troubleshooting, as well as simplicity and cost effectiveness for the solution. And uh, also at the end of my presentation, I. Uh, have to mention 
the last thing that is also crucial. How to estimate the business damage of potential, inst uh, of potential or real incident and respond in appropriate way. Uh, you can use the uh, um, recommendations of NIST, how to uh, improve the quality of risk management, and you can also use the tools. With Flowmon, very easily you can integrate uh, the incident detection, the technical incident detection, with the uh, GRC, the solution for the business impact analysis for helping the people responsible for incident detection to respond in appropriate way. What this means exactly? For the technical staff, it means the well-organized workflow. So uh, in uh, one screen, you see all the incidents detected by Flowmon in this way. When you click at the incident, you see the details of the incident. You have the playbook. The playbook recommends you what actions should be done. You have the details, what happened exactly. Uh, what you see here, it is the Flowmon uh, log with the details. And also, you have the business consequences that is estimated automatically. In this case, you see that this incident if we do not uh, react uh, quickly and properly, would have the following consequences. Disruption of business processes of the organization, sales process and uh, sales business process, and SCADA, loss of reputation, and any other uh, consequences that, that are related to this particular incident. And what is important, people who are responsible for security management immediately understand the business impact of the incident and can uh, uh, conduct appropriate activities, appropriate response to minimize or to avoid the business damage. Also, uh, in this uh, system, I am talking about SecureVisio solution at the moment that could be integrated with Flowmon. We have the attack simulation and the failure simulation. So uh, you have the network map. The solution is called network mapping and risk scoring. And on this network map, you can see how the uh, cyber criminals potentially on, or in reality attacked our systems, what safeguards were broken, and we also see uh, what is the scope of the incident. So very easily we can plan, plan the containment, we can also very easily involve the business people responsible for the uh, business processes uh, to react in appropriate, in appropriate way and to minimize and sometimes even avoid the business damage. The tools are available and some uh, security operation centers, uh, uh, especially in, in, in Poland, the country that I am from, are using this, these tools to uh, make security management more efficient. To summarize my presentation, uh, when we uh, approach the NIST directive, we should have in mind that these new cybersecurity requirements depend on the organization uh, to cover uh, critical systems so where the absolutely the highest priority is available to cover with the security requirements, the risk management, protection, incident detection, incident reporting to the national authority, and also the cybersecurity documentation. And for the appropriate uh, implementation in the organization of these uh, requirements, we will need to have uh, trained people, we will need to uh, organize uh, the entire process of security management. For this purpose, we can use, for example, NIST uh, recommendations that was mentioned during my presentation. And also we need the tools, tools like Flowmont, tools like SecureVisio, that could uh, provide you the incident detection and also can help you in appropriate response for the incidents. From my side, it's uh, everything. Thank you very much for your attention.
Hello and uh, apologize for the uh, small technical issue here, but we have our next speaker, Alexander Heglund, coming up, uh, who is a sales engineer uh, in Sofos. So I will give a word to him. Thank you very much. Hello, and thanks for joining me, and sorry for the technical issues uh, that I was having. So this presentation is going to be a bit different because I had s something else totally plan for, for the whole presentation, but sometimes that doesn't work. So we'll, we'll try to improvise. Um, so <coughs> let's see if we can do it like this. Okay, so um, I'm from what we call the Generation X. Okay, so I'm born in the 80s. I, was, I grew up in the 90s. Um, and I've basically been ushered into the digital era with technology evolving around me. So. Uh, we got cable TV, we got laptops evolving, we got flat screens TV, uh, and of course the internet. So the internet was a big thing. Uh, I was actually pretty late. I got my first computer when I was, I think I was like 13, and it was, that was 1998. Um, so that's when I first got onto the internet. But ever since then, you know, you've seen the internet evolving. You've seen what technology can do, um, and uh, there's a lot of talk about machine learning and, of course, deep learning. And being uh, a Generation X kid, I, of course, uh, played a lot of video games in my past. So this is an outtake from that uh, part of my life that I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, so there's a company called, uh, or a non-ideal organization called OpenAI. Um, and it, was, it caught my attention because one of the persons behind that organization is Elon Musk from Tesla. I think he left now for some other project, but he was uh, supporting that organization into developing machine learning and also deep learning. Um, and they made some pretty cool breakthroughs when it comes to um, machine learning. They actually uh, developed a neural network and a machine that was able to play Dota, and that was its uh, Defense of the Ancients, if you heard about that. It's a spin-off of a, a game called Warcraft, which was released back in the begin beginning of 2000. Um, and it's been really popular. And being from my generation, esports is, of course, a big thing. Um, and um, that machine was actually able to learn 180 years worth of playing that game. So it managed to teach itself basically everything there is to know about that game. So uh, everything from how to win, uh, how to collaborate with your teammates, what is a win, what is a loss, and even uh, getting to know what a reward is. So when the machine would lose or lose a teammate, it would uh, take that as a bad experience. And if they would win, they would take that as a good experience. So taking emotions aside, that's a pretty big thing for a machine to be able to accomplish. Um, and it even caught the attention of Bill Gates, which basically said that you know, due to the fact that they were able to collaborate and learn what teamwork is, that is a big thing for machines, okay? Um, but machine learning is all around us and also deep learning in our everyday. You know, Netflix is using it, for example. We have Spotify. Uh, we have different kinds of companies that are uh, using machine learning in order to learn what you like, what your desires are, what your needs are, and tailor that experience to fit you, okay? So they want to learn exactly what you like so they can tailor an experience according to what your needs, basically. Um, and another really good example of how deep learning is uh, utilized is banks. So banks are using that to detect fraud or scam. So for example, if you were to put in your credit card in a ATM in uh, Latvia, for example, and then a couple of hours later, that same credit card would be used in, for example, Australia, then that would trigger a mechanism in that deep, deep learning engine telling it that it was some kind of fishy activity. Um, and um, it's, uh, machine learning is complex. You know, it takes a lot of data in order to get you know, an accurate model of what machine learning is. And looking at this picture, for example, you can see that you know, th there's a lot of work that goes into uh, discovering the attributes of a human face. And in this case, the machine learning engine thought that, well, Saruman looked a lot like that dog in this case. <laughs> so um, that was what machine learning in this case could determine out of that picture, all right? So um, what we're doing with machine learning and deep learning is what we call predictive security. So we're basically taking that uh, approach to 
detecting what is good and what is bad. So going back to what OpenAI did with uh, the g video game, for example, they're using that deep learning engine to um, teach the computer to win in a game. We're trying to teach our deep learning engine how to win against hackers and being one step ahead of everyone. So that's what we mean when we talk about predictive security. So we're trying to determine what is a bad file and what is a good file. Okay, so we're trying to um, use the deep learning engine to determine if a file is bad or if a file is good. And also to discover what we call grayware or potentially unwanted applications. So files we have never seen before, unknown malware, uh, unknown executables, are being discovered by the deep learning engine, which has taught itself, using what we have taught it, how to identify what is a malware and what is not. Um, so looking at the uh, machine learning versus deep learning, it's a quite complex, um, quite complex structure, but I'm going to try and explain it in really simple words. So a machine learning is basically using a decision tree to determine what is bad and what is good. So we're asking it simple questions, and this uh, requires a lot of input from a human in this case. So we're asking, is this a file you've seen before? Yes. Okay, does it have these characteristics? The characteristics? Yes. Uh, does it resemble a virus? No. So that would give you an output that this is probably not a virus in this case. Whereas in the case of deep learning, uh, and our uh, engine, in this case, or the algorithm, it's actually got a, its own neural network. So it's using its own patterns or attributes that, it's, uh, that we have taught it in the past to discover by itself uh, unknown malware and what is malware in case of, for example, new files, unknown files, and also potentially unwanted programs. So, for example, if you see someone with a ski mask uh, in the middle of the summer going into a bank, that's pretty suspicious, right? So in case of deep learning, we would then determine that the ski mask summer is probably not a good thing, right? Same goes for um, if, for example, you see someone wearing a Santa Claus hat in the middle of the winter, that's probably nothing to worry about, right? So that's um, sort of how we determine you know, what is good and what is bad. Um, and uh, looking at uh, the, the idea behind predictive security is, of course, to achieve perfect security. So we want to have as good a uh, hit rate as possible. So we want to be able to detect 100% of all malware that is out there. We know that that is near impossible, but we can at least try to get to 99.9, .9, right? And in order to do that, we need to have deep learning in our, in our backpack, okay? So we need to have that working for us in order to determine what is bad and what is not, and also discovering new malware. So looking at traditional antivirus solutions, we see that they have about a 50% perfect security rate whereas they have a pretty good false positive rate. So that's also what we call the user annoyance level. So if the user gets annoyed, it's a bad solution. Okay, so then we have too many false positives. Um, we took one step further and developed machine learning for endpoint security, and we, uh, get, we got, got closer to perfect security, but we got a much higher false positive rate. And that is because the machine learning engine wasn't ready to determine uh, exactly you know, what is good and what is bad. It had too many uh, false positive and not enough false positive mitigation techniques within the algorithm in this case. Whereas uh, going to Sophos and the deep learning engine that we have developed, we actually got closer to perfect security and we also managed to get uh, closer to a low level of false positives. So that was a huge win in this case. So the, the deep learning engine has the capability of uh, acquiring a high security score, but also keeping a low false positive score, and also thus uh, making sure that the user annoyance level is low. Um, we um, have incorporated this in a couple of our products, but the, but the most prominent one is, of course, uh, Sophos Intercept X, which we call um, the, the power of the plus, because we have a multiple layer approach to security. So of course, you would need to have the traditional antivirus solution in order to t detect what is known. And you also would need to have uh, a ransomware protection, which we call CryptoGuard. We have also empowered it with AI or deep learning, which I've been talking about, and of course, anti-exploit technology. 
So all of these layers uh, are included in inter IntercepTX and are working together in order to protect machines and endpoints from unknown malware, un unknown executables, fileless attacks, etc. And um, something that we just released and something that uh, is helping you in order to uh, investigate or see what is not there is something we call EDR, so Endpoint Detection and Response uh, a tool that is included in IntercepTX. So with the EDR, we're giving you the ability to uh, easier, easier visibility and detection because that's always a, a problem in solutions. So you have, you have a blind spot because there's a lack of reporting and a lack of um, investigation into what is going on. And then, of course, you have the analysis and investigation, which is also something that is time consuming. It takes a lot of time to do. And um, the and you need a lot of expertise in order to do so in a mo more efficient manner. And last but not least, the incident response is something that is a problem because you need to have the right personnel and you need to have the right personnel at that time, uh, which costs money, costs time, costs resources. So. Um, this, of course, will overwhelm the customers and the users because there's too much information going through the endpoints. There's too much uh, information going through the firewall. So you need some kind of funnel in order to um, summarize that and aggregate that into a solution that will tell you exactly what is going on and to simplify it and making it easier for you. So um, in comes SophosX. Uh, Sophos Intercept X and EDR. So the EDR is basically capable of uh, giving you the ability to first of all detect what is going on using the uh, deep learning engine and also the anti-exploit technology and all the layers in the endpoint. And second, we are helping you investigate so there's more uh, clarity and less noise. So we're basically taking all that information that is going to the endpoints and um, simplifying the vis visualization for you so you can read about what's happening and you don't have to dig deep and waste your time into s data that is unnecessary, basically. And of course, we're able to respond. So automatically responding to the threat without you having to be involved. So that's what we call automatic remediation. Uh, we can respond to the threat, making sure that we uh, isolate the problem in a computer so you have time to investig investigate what is going on. Um, which makes it possible for you to save a lot of time because we give you the tools to become a forensic specialist without being one. So basically having all these three functions is probably really expensive and um, usually companies don't have that because they are expensive people, these uh, security analysts and forensic specialists. So you don't need to be that. I know that it's really hard these days to be everything. You need to be an administrator, you need to be IT security specialist, you need to be a complete IT rock star in order to do everything that is needed of you within the company. So adding forensics uh, specialist to that is a pretty big role, right? So we're giving you a tool that is helping you to uh, do that job for you. So we have Sophos Labs and we have, have deep learning doing all the work for you, uh, which makes it possible for you to focus on other things, but also giving you the visibility and being able to detect the unknown var variables within your network. So, for example, if you have an infection, if you have latent uh, viruses or malware within your network, we're giving you the clarity and the visibility to see that and what is going on. Now, um, I was going to show you a demo, but due to technical uh, difficulties, I can't really do that. <laughs> yeah, the, the demo is actually on my computer, so that's the problem. <laughs> So um, if you're interested in seeing how this works in action, I can actually show you back at our booth, at the Sophos booth, because I have it ready on my computer. Um, and without further ado, I'm basically thanking for myself. And if there's any questions, just let me know. Make sure you come to our booth, and I'll show you the demo. It's really cool. I promise it's worth your time.